Welcome back, everyone, to Ferris Sports Update. Time for our final segment, Time to Talk, Bulldog Track and Field. And with us, head coach Steve Picucci. And coach, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Bulldogs hosted their annual uh, invitational at Top Taggart Field this past Saturday. And uh, I know it's a lot of work to put on a, a home meet, but talk about the, the day and some of the, some of the great results uh, for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it is a, it's a lot of work to pull off a home meet, especially in a small town like Big Rapids. But we had a, a lot of community members and support from the university, and we were able to pull it off, get the number of volunteers we needed. But uh, we had great weather, perfect day, uh, 60s, a light wind. So it was really good. Uh, we had some great performances, uh, pretty low numbers as far as team turnout with the uh, holiday weekend. But uh, we still made the most of it and really kind of had some really strong performances you know, throughout the day. Uh, two of those performances, national uh, qualification marks, Tina Muir in the 1500 and Jessica Pilling in the hammer throw. Uh, talk about uh, their results and being able to qualify for the national meet. Yeah, Jess is uh, returning. She's a, she's a sophomore this year. She was All-American in the hammer throw as a freshman. So she's already moving up on the national rankings. We're only two weeks into the season. So we're hoping she's going to have to get a little more to get in. But it's a good, you know, good opener for her last week at NC State and then this week at, uh, at uh, Bulldog really kind of step up and really I said she's consistent right now, so you know, Coach Levine and I were just hoping for one more big breakthrough for her. She should get her in to the meet, you know. So we got a couple more weeks left where she can really get it. Uh, and then Tina stepped down in distance, a pretty rare event for her. She ran the 1500 and uh, ran an automatic qualifying time in that. You know, more than likely won't run it at the national championships. We're going to focus on her, you know, her better events. But uh, it's good to see her do that. Like I said, you know, doesn't get a chance to run that event very often. So uh, it was a pretty good performance for her too. And then we had, uh, like I said, that puts her high on the nationalist there. So. We'll, uh, we'll see where it goes from there, but obviously with her, we're focusing more on a couple different events. Uh, with the great weather conditions, how did that help the performances and some of the marks on Saturday? Uh, it really helped a lot, actually. You know, This early in the season, especially in Michigan, you have no idea what you're going to get. So uh, we're really happy with that. It really helped uh, the track events, especially. You know, a lot of those you know, the middle distance and sprint kids, too, allowed them to actually get completely warmed up and ready to go. So we had some strong performances there. Uh, and then, like I said, in the field events too, it just made it so much easier for those guys to get out there and get comfortable and get their get their throws in and get their marks. So it really helped us. We had a lot of big breakthroughs, you know, on, in everything, you know, sprints, distance, throws. So it's good to see this early. So, with this being your only home meet, uh, how how great of an opportunity and uh, experience is that for for your athletes to be able to run and compete in front of some of the home fans? That was good for them. Like I said, I don't think it's really it's not a big meet for us. We're not really keen on it, but it was good for them to kind of get one at home and kind of be able to be relaxed a little bit and kind of enjoy it a little bit more rather than you know all the pressure of big competition so and then we do host the conference championships every now and then so it's good to have some experience on your home track and competition not just in practice so it was good for them I think we had a lot of parents and family up too so this was week two of the outdoor season you started uh, the week before down in North Carolina at North Carolina State and uh, you've had a couple weeks here and already uh, several uh, big performances and some national qualification marks uh, from the two meets uh, just talk about how the seasons went so far in the outdoor season uh, so far things are going really well like I said obviously you know we had Jess Pilling she's already qualified in the hammer you know she have to improve that mark just a little bit to get in uh, and then the 1500 we have three already that have hit the mark um, Shelby Daniels, uh, she's hit the mark at NC State, so did Samantha Johnson, and then Tina hit it this week, and then uh, last week at NC State, Tina and Anna Rudd both hit it in the 5,000 meters, so we've already had a number of national qualifiers already, and um, we're hoping to, you know, maybe get a few more and really improve on those marks, get some kids into the championships. You mean Tina, or you mentioned Tina Muir, uh, she uh, is a nine-time All-American already. Uh, what has she meant to the program in terms of the women's side? Um, she really allowed us to kind of establish ourselves right away, uh, kind of come in and have that, you know, that dominant athlete as far as, you know, our program is concerned. And she's been one of the best at distance athletes in, you know, in her last four years here. So it really kind of helped us recruiting-wise, helps you, you know, get your name out there at the championships. And really kind of, I think it's helped solidify our program right away you know that you know okay we can be successful right away and it's kind of led to great things for all the you know the other girls coming in have seen that as you know as far as recruiting goes so it's really helped us there um, it's just kind of helped you know help me too as, as a coach allows us to you know, kind of be a little bit more flexible with things and I can you know be a little bit more picky in my recruiting when you have someone at that level you don't have to be bringing in huge numbers you know you know you have a few really good kids so it's really helped us as a program you know both sides men's and women's too. Talk about how Great this year has been uh, for the women's side. Maybe uh, as you started off in cross country, a national ranking, national uh, uh, championship appearance. Uh, you move on to the indoor season, a national ranking, and uh, right now I think one of the the top women's programs in terms of the combined finishes uh, in the country. Talk about the, the whole season uh, from cross country to indoor to outdoor. Well, yeah, obviously we started off strong in cross country. Um, we actually suffered through a little bit of injuries in cross country, so we actually were hoping for more than we got. 
and it's still, you know, we were eighth in the country again, second year in the row, two All-Americans. So it was a really solid cross-country season. Um, like I said, the women ran really well despite, you know, suffering some, you know, some key setbacks. So they were able to really push through that. And then indoor was, like I said, we had one of the best indoor seasons we've ever had. Uh, we, uh, distance medley relay was All-American, you know, fourth in the country, shattered the school record. Uh, and then, you know, Tina came back the next day in, in, in cha indoor championships and, you know, placed third in the 5,000 meters to put us, you know, in the top 20 as a team. And then already, you know, indoor, you know, rolled indoor into outdoor, we're already rolling outdoor. So, like I said, really got some positive things. And like I said, the women are really excited and starting to really kind of gain some momentum. You've got a couple weeks uh, to go here in the outdoor season before the GLIAC championships. Uh, what are some of the meets coming up uh, that will help prepare you for that GLIAC championship? Uh, well, one of the you know the bigger meets we have coming up is, is in a couple of weeks. I'm going to take a few of the kids out to uh, Mount Sac Relays in uh, in California, and then that's one day. And then while we're out there, we'll hit another meet at uh, the Beach Invitational, Long Beach State. So that's a big one for those you know national qualifier type kids. And then we also have a couple of invitationals down at Hillsdale. Uh, Hillsdale hosts a big invitational end of April, and we're going to actually going to go down there this weekend too, and you know get on that good fast track and really get some competition there. And, uh, and then Coach Levine's going to take the throwers down to Ashland, which is one of the best throwing programs in the country, to get some really good you know, competition for those kids as well. So we got those, those meets kind of coming up that we're keying on to really get us ready for GLIAX. As you move from indoor season to outdoor season, how has uh, the great weather conditions helped uh, with the training as you, as you moved into the outdoor season this spring? Well, we got on the track a lot earlier than we ever had before, so that's you know, it's really helped. It's kind of sped up our progression a little bit to transition from indoor to outdoor. But like I said, it's it's nice to be on the track, not trying to do workouts on the road or find somewhere to work out inside. So it's been a it's been a huge bonus for us, and it's really kind of allowed us to kind of focus on our training and you know have to worry about racing as much because you're already getting quality stuff in. What are some of the goals for both the the women's and the men's sides as you as you move in and look towards the GLIAC championships and then hopefully uh, some some more qualifiers for the national championships? Yeah, I think one of the big goals for uh, for the women's program is just to continue you know, our progression and really kind of get some kids in scoring positions at the conference championships, get some uh, all-conference awards. Uh, it's kind of our goal there. We had a, you know, a, a decent indoor season as far as conference championships goes, but I think we can really step it up now that you know, we're on the outdoor track. You know, we, we kind of got you know, things kind of even out facility-wise for us, so we're really able to kind of take that next step and be a little more competitive outdoors. Um, and then for the guys, like I said, you know, the guys, we really got kind of a chip on our shoulders right now. We want to prove that you know, we may have had a little bit of an off indoor season, but we're going to be back stronger than ever. So, and the guys are, you know, really aggressive right now and ready to go. So, I think they got something to prove. So, they're excited and they're going to really get after it. Uh, obviously, the distance area has always been a strong suit, but what have some, been some of the other uh, big events for, for you here in the outdoor season so far? Uh, right now, actually, on both sides, we have some pretty strong, you know, 400 meter runners. Uh, Zoe Holman was indoor 400 meter champion, and she's already running while outdoors. Uh, Justin Price is back from injury from a year ago, and he's already running, you know, back to his old self. So we're hoping to get, you know, I said two more, you know, both 400 runners, you know, running well and getting to the finals at GLIAX. I think that's a big, big step for us. And our, our throws program is, you know, not just Jess Pilling. It's starting to come along, too. We've got some really strong freshman field event athletes that are really starting to step it up. Well, uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, congratulations again on the great results so far, and best of luck uh, here as you continue the outdoor season. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. This has been Ferris Sports Update. Thanks for tuning in. A reminder, you can follow all the action online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com.